let's just say that somebody came here a few years ago and made a video talking about he absolutely hated this place and that people were so rude and that there was nothing to do it was so boring and man those kind of videos ruin tourism in countries wow this gate is amazing it's beautiful um, the dart driver last night super friendly guy too he lived in Melbourne Australia for so many years but he came back here because he says he loves his home so much there's one of the most iconic mosques right in front of us I'm not sure exactly what it's called I'll learn all this information as time goes on what's up everybody welcome back to another beautiful country I'm in the country of Brunei I actually arrived here last night and the weather hasn't been exactly what I was expecting it's been raining non-stop and I pretty much spent the entire day, my first day here, in the hotel room. But later on um, this week, we'll be out to explore a lot more. But I wanted to walk around and show you guys my first impressions of this country that um, a lot of people have a lot of misconceptions about. So hopefully throughout this series, we'll clarify all of those misconceptions. And I'll be able to show you guys exactly how beautiful and how wonderful this country is to visit now right now I'm actually starting off um, near this canal that actually leads down to the Brunei River and I'm noticing that there's some boats out on the water and down this direction is actually where the mouth of the Brunei River is hello sir you do tours how much $30 for 60 minutes Okay, I'll come tomorrow. <laughs> Let's do the morning. In the morning. Okay, what time? Um, let's do nine o'clock. Okay, what? How? What's your price for how long? Yeah, I want to go to the floating village, the city, Kampung. Okay, how much for the mangroves? $40. Okay, I'll see you tomorrow. Okay, 9 o'clock. 9 o'clock. <laughs> That's how you book tours here in Brunei, man. You yell at people on boats and they book them for you. So, I'm with Gladys today. Hello. <laughs> She's not the biggest fan of the rain right now. She wishes we had an umbrella. We might have to buy one because I think we're not going to be in uh, for good luck the rest of this trip. I'll see you tomorrow. 9 o'clock. All right. I'll see you. Asad, Chris. Both. Nice to meet you. <laughs> Thank you. All right, you know what? Um, let's actually, you know what? Let's take the the walkway because I'm I don't want to break any rules here. Um, everything seems to be very organized. It's a little bit different than where we just came from in the Philippines, where everything was quite chaotic. Here, everything is very organized. I noticed that from the moment we got picked up at the airport yesterday. Actually, I got some funny stories to talk to you guys about uh, my arrival and how we actually made it to the hotel, but. Um, from the moment we arrived, man, everything is so clean here, so organized. It really, it really doesn't feel like I'm in Southeast Asia anymore. Now, for those of you guys who geographically don't know where we are, Brunei is actually located on the Borneo Island, the island of Borneo, which is actually shared with uh, Malaysia. And I believe, don't quote me on this. I'm not a, ge I'm not a, uh, I'm not big on my geography. Um, but I believe it's also shared slightly with Indonesia as well. But we're on the island of Borneo. Brunei is located on the north of the island. And it's actually um, a very tiny country. You could actually drive all the way across to the borders of Malaysia within an hour's time. And um, man, I've noticed right away from the moment we've arrived that there are a lot of Malaysian people here in Brunei. And that is because, well, Yesterday, as soon as I checked in, got through immigration, one guy in line was like, yo, Chris, man, what's up, dude? I watch all of your Malaysia series. And I was like, no way, this isn't real, man. YouTube's an incredible place. Like, it connects the whole world. And he's like, yeah, man, um, I'll wait for you outside of immigration because he was a little bit further ahead of me. He was like, I'll wait for you outside of immigration. I'll give you my number and let's get together and do some stuff this weekend. So hopefully I'll be linking up with him. But long story short, I made it through security. I was supposed to get picked up from a hotel that I had booked for the first night. We're in a new one now that I'll show you later on this week. Um, and unfortunately, the communication was a bit off. So I missed the airport pickup. And this guy actually helped me use an application called Dart. 
Hello, how's it going? Hi, good. <laughs> he helped me use an application called Dart to get to my hotel and he booked it for me. Actually waited at the airport. It was 1 a.m. Yes. and he waited to watch me get into the car and take off, man. So the hospitality here, so far, top notch. Especially because, well, all the hotel staff have been incredibly friendly. Um, the people that we've interacted on the streets, everybody says hi, hello. It's awesome. Reminds me very much of Malaysia. And you guys know how much I love Malaysia. So this here is like the downtown area. And yeah, I'm not sure what's going on down here. I haven't really walked too much, but there's a lot of restaurants. I've noticed some like small little Rati Chennai stands, which we definitely have to try. There's also a bunch of barber shops, tailors, tailors here. Coffee shop. A coffee shop? That looks Hell good. yeah! A coffee shop? Hey, that looks nice. Wow. That does look nice. Now, we're actually walking towards um, a, a shopping center around here because it's raining right now. So, oh, look, money exchange. All of the stuff you need is found on our street. This is awesome. So, but yeah, we're heading down to um, the shopping center right now because in the rain, well, you never really want to do much. Who likes doing stuff in the rain? The rain sucks. Especially when you're out trying to make videos. It's terrible. It's like your worst enemy. But we're going to make the most out of it. And hopefully it doesn't stick around like this the rest of the trip. Now, you guys that were watching the Philippines series, which you probably didn't see. Actually, you didn't see at all. Is Manila. And you're probably like, why, Chris? Why didn't you film in Manila? Well, Gladys, why don't you explain why we didn't film in Manila? The rain. The rain. No, that wasn't a rain. That was a diluvio. A storm. How do you say that in English? Diluvio. I don't know, like a straight typhoon. It was brutal. Oh, look at the motorcycle crew. Out for a Sunday cruise. Actually, it's a Saturday, a Saturday cruise. Wow. I feel like I'm in America. Stylish. Yeah, in the US, you always see like groups of motorcycles running around um, in big groups, especially on the I weekends. Notice here, the streets are so quiet. Reminds me like, um, Japan and I love it. Yeah, Gladys is straight a quiet person. I'm on the opposite side of the end of things. I like to hear like um, a lot of people out doing things. But here the streets are very much quiet. That's that's a big difference from uh, Malaysia to Brunei. Here the streets are very quiet, calm and man, impeccably clean, like so clean. And uh, um, the cars let you cross. Yeah. If there's no red light, they stop. Exactly. Oh, That's something that we didn't find in the Philippines. Man, the Philippines, amazing people. I'm not talking bad about the Philippines, but the drivers, man. Hello. <laughs> oh man, people are so nice here in Brunei. But here in the Philippines, no one would stop. Everybody would just, you'll be crossing the street and you're, it's like Vietnam. You're playing Frogger in between everybody. But man, everybody's so nice here in Brunei. Seriously. Now, I'm not gonna, I don't like to talk bad about other creators, but, and I'm not gonna mention any names. I'm not gonna talk bad about anybody, but it really doesn't take a whole lot of research to know exactly what I'm talking about. But let's just say that somebody came here a few years ago and made a video talking about he absolutely hated this place and that people were so rude and that there was nothing to do. It was so boring. And man, those kind of videos ruin tourism in countries. That's one of the reasons why we were even hesitant to coming on out here, but we knew that we had to come out here and see this for ourselves because like most places in the world, and you know, nothing wrong with that creator. I'm not mentioning names, like I said, but everybody has their own experiences and everybody's entitled to their own opinions. But you also have to acknowledge that that was your experience and that the whole, you can't like label a whole country as bad because you had a bad experience because that's, yeah. So many other people like us could come here and enjoy this. Like, um, you know, I love going to see the mosque. I love walking these streets while they're quiet. I can appreciate this. And as a traveler, you have to have an open mind. And there's some places you're going to go to in the world that might not be your favorite, but that doesn't necessarily mean they're bad places. So let's just clarify that right now. Now, it looks like there might have been like some huge event going on here today. But there's one of the most iconic mosques right in front of us. I'm not sure exactly what it's called. I'll learn all this information as time goes on. But I've seen that mosque absolutely everywhere. 
It looks like this is a big parade field of some sort. Now the, now the full name of the capital city that we're in right now in Brunei is actually called Bandar Seri Begawan. And I was a bit confused on how to pronounce it, but I think I said it pretty, pretty good. Bandar Seri Begawan. And we were actually talking to um, the dart driver last night, super friendly guy too. He lived in Melbourne, Australia for so many years, but he came back here because he says he loves his home so much. And he spoke well, everybody we've talked to so far has spoken amazing English, and he told us that um, Bandar Seri Begawan was pronounced exactly that way, and that it's one of his favorite places in the world. And it's not hard to see why, especially if you're like Gladys and you like nice and quiet spaces. Yeah. This is for you, right? This is for me, like Japan. <laughs> very quiet, very calm, very peaceful. It's, I love it. It's unique. It's unique i like it too now right here in front of us let's actually read what this says this actually says brunei darazulam heritage trail and it says this is a historical site where the proclamation of brunei's independence from united kingdom was made on the 1st of january 1984. it is constantly used as the main venue for national celebrations including his majesty's birthday royal guard parade the national day and molidur rasul Prophet Muhammad's peace be upon him birthday celebrations and there's actually a little guide right here that says we're only a one minute walk from the post office a one minute walk from the government secretary building a four minute walk from the royal regalia and two minutes from the old La, pa La Pau Lama building very cool and there are a few tourists walking around I've noticed a lot of backpackers here so great place to come spend a few days now um, this is our first day, so I don't know exactly how we're gonna lay out our itinerary, but if it keeps raining We're gonna have to make some serious modifications But hopefully it doesn't continue to rain because I want to see I want to see a lot more and I want to do a lot more And me and Gladys want to go to the beaches. Everybody told us that the beaches in Brunei are awesome The night markets are awesome. We want to experience all of that. So hopefully fingers crossed we can Wow, this gate is amazing. It's beautiful. So yeah, for those of you guys who don't know, the country of Brunei is a Muslim dominant country. However, you will find so many other religions that can be found here in the country, but the main religion of the country is Muslim or Islam. And that's why you see so many mosques. I actually haven't heard the, the, the song of the Quran being played here yet. Maybe because we were a bit further last night. Maybe today we'll hear it. Yeah. I'm not sure. They did play it on the airline that we flew into. We came here with Royal Brunei, Royal Brunei, Brunei Airlines. And let me just tell you guys, that was one of the best airline experiences that we've had in a long time. The plane was so clean, staff was so nice, and the airplane was empty. Yeah. <laughs> Literally empty. We had our own rows the entire time. I came in economy, but like if it was first class. Yeah, and we actually <laughs> tried to see how much it cost for the first class upgrade. And let me just tell you guys, they wanted $1,050 per person for a two and a half hour flight. And me and Gladys looked at each other. I went like this. And I was like, hell no, I'm not doing that. <laughs> um, so yeah, we didn't do that, but it felt like to be honest it felt like we were flying on a private jet we had our own like it was empty in there it's crazy but yeah this here is the secretary building that we just got done reading was a one minute walk from the map i also love how there's uh the brunei flag absolutely everywhere the brunei flag in every direction very patriotic country now here I'll, I'll make another video telling you guys some fun facts. Man, look at the motorcycle guys waving. It's sick. Hello. <laughs> I think here they love tourists. Yeah, I think Brunei might be the friendliest country in Southeast Asia, man. I actually had a lot of people reach out and tell me that they want to give me tours as well. But, um, man, we booked these flights extremely last minute. We really didn't have no... Alright, I'm not going to say we. Chris here is a sporadic person. I never can make up my mind on what I want to do. And we literally booked these flights like two days before coming on out here. So 
all of the contacts that I had made on Instagram, now everybody's extremely busy because I waited last minute. But that's just the way things go, I guess. But yeah, let me know what you guys think of this um, city so far. Let me know what your first impressions are. Look at how green everything is, how clean it is. Oh, they're passing by again. Yeah, it's definitely a motorcycle Saturday. <laughs> Love it. Yeah, but hey, friend, don't you have a spot for me? You trying to go on a motorcycle? Yeah. Gladys is trying to leave me to go on a motorcycle. Come Not on now. For both of us. I'm down with that. <laughs> so this here is the other building that actually was on the guide over at the parade field. This is the old La Pau Lama building. So I'm guessing it's, it's this one here in front of us? Or is it this one? No, I think it's that one because it says it was um, construed with the colonial architectural concept. Oh, okay. So yeah, let me just read you, read, read you a little bit about this building then. It says that this distinctive her heritage building was constructed in 1951 with the colonial architectural concept. On the 29th September 1959, the old Lapu the old La Pau building was the venue for the proclamation of the Brunei written constitution of 1959, which served as a self-governance declaration to the state of Brunei. Oh, cool. So this is where the, I guess the, dec yeah, the declaration of independence was written. That's awesome. Very historical place. And then it says here that in 2006, this building was ga gazetted. Should have stayed in school. Should have stayed in school. I'm a YouTuber, guys not a not a teacher not a teacher um uh, was gazetted under the antiquities and treasure trove act 1967. okay i gotta read more books right <laughs> gladys is very disappointed in me right now because she actually reads so many books and then i sit there and just listen to music on flights let me know what are you the book guy or the music guy said people that read books in the beach we are weirdos what do you think about that guys <laughs> don't unsubscribe <laughs> don't unsubscribe come on now and last night in the plane we were watching a video about um luxury boat or cheap huge cheap that takes you from london to usa and there's a library huge library and it's a big deal that the passengers go to read books and yeah. see the ocean and I was like oh I need to go there Chris like yes because you're a weirdo and you like to read <laughs> <laughs> what All do you right. think guys come on man do you, you like the to vibe. read or no let me know in the comments no to be fair I like reading books too I just don't do it often and <laughs> a book a book takes me oh man I got all kinds of raindrops and sweats like a mix of both coming down my face so I'm not picking my nose, alright guys? I already know the comments coming. But, um, no, seriously, it takes me months to read a book. I need to get better. I should start dedicating some time to um, better my vocabulary. But it's okay, not everybody was made for everything. Yeah, there's, true. There's things you like, there's others that you don't like. Uh, I like reading, I don't like to listen to music. Chris put music every day if he can. Even in the morning, and I wake I up like to music. I like silence yeah oh man i just realized we walked right in front of the la pao building and i didn't show you anything but it's beautiful guys <laughs> it's very nice and then this here is the royal regalia building the main entrance man it's it's cool that the city is like so small that if you're in the city center you can walk around and see all of the iconic sites even in the rain and it's not like it's not terrible it's super nice I wonder why the number 77 is around. It's because of the Majesty birthday. Oh, Sultan yes. Turned on 77 years. The Sultan turned 77 years old this turned year. On. <laughs> so, uh, it turned on. What he turned 77 years old this year. Now, um, the Sultan, everybody refers to him here, I believe, as His Majesty. It's the respectful way to um, um, refer to the leader. But the Sultan here, he's actually one of the richest men in the world. And man, we, we, we read a lot about him and it's crazy. Can you imagine this guy like is so rich that he has 
a commercial streamliner jet that he actually flies himself when he goes from one country to the next or even on vacation. He has like a fleet of like 400 Rolls Royces, a fleet of his own Ferraris. He, he what, what, what did you read about a gold Rolls Royce? Oh yeah, he has a gold Rolls Royce. I saw a picture of him on the Rolls Royce in a parade or something. Wow. It's on Google. Well, they say a lot of things in Google. We don't know if they're facts. You know, but that's what they say. But either way, he has a sick car collection. We all want to. <laughs> and there's no doubt it, Google can't even uh, say that this is not true. Dude has a lot of money. So, um, yeah, very wealthy man. And from what I've been told, it's just like any other place in the world. There's plenty of people that admire and love him. And there's also others who are not a big fan, which is okay. That's what politics is about. There's people that like certain politicians and there's others that don't. But um, I'm not getting into politics because I don't know too much and I'm not gonna talk about the current situation in Brunei because I don't know nothing about it, to be honest with you guys. I'm just a tourist coming, admiring the people, talking to the people and of course doing a little bit of sightseeing in between, man. I've wanted to come here for a very long time, especially since I finished up my Malaysia trip. Everybody told me when I was in Malaysia, you have to come to Brunei and now I see why. The place is gorgeous, it's beautiful, people are nice, it's friendly, it's a welcoming place. I love it here already. So, um, yeah, with that being said, it looks like there's a little market here in front. I have a feeling we're going to be getting into some quite interesting things this week, guys. It's going to be fun. Now, I'm not going to lie. I really wish this rain would go away. That would make everything a whole lot more enjoyable. But we got to make the most out of our trip. And even if we walk around and get a little soaked, it's not a big deal. And you know what? If it stays like this, this is bearable. If it's like, oh yeah. man, what we experienced in Manila where it was like somebody was standing over you with a bucket of water and just dumping it, then we really won't be able to get much done. But yeah, guys, let me know what you guys think of my first impressions here in Brunei. Overall, I'm very excited to be here. It's, as I mentioned many of times, it's very clean. The people are super friendly already. It's a very welcoming place. And to be honest, it's very nice to be walking around right now in silence especially and you know what i think this is this this is why this country makes a great spot if you're traveling around southeast asia even if you come from our favorite place in the world like thailand it's nice to come to a place like this and just relax and not hear horns or have tuk-tuk drivers trying to get you inside of the tuk-tuk or people trying to sell you tours all the time this is nice it's such a welcoming vibe and we even got to meet a homie with the boat that I'm gonna go out on a tour with tomorrow so um, look forward to that video as well that's gonna be some good fun and yeah for now I'll see you guys again soon for another adventure from here in Brunei thank you so much Gladys now Gladys is actually filming some videos here as well so go and check out her channel her channel is Sayada Travels I'll leave it linked down below check it out and um, show her some love because we're both gonna be pouring our heart out into these videos we love we love sharing with you guys our experiences and we want to give you guys an honest experience as we do um, make our way around the world because as I mentioned there's some people that have come here and made some absolutely terrible videos and said that it's extremely boring well don't come here then I don't know what to tell you like <laughs> some places are just very chill all right guys um, with that being said see you guys on the next one you